feel like we've been duped. We've been tricked. We've shed tears. We've written tributes. And for what? I would like to do my presentation now. Miss is so bewildered that all she can say is sure. You have asked us to research the history of women in our family, which was not especially easy as my mother is not a sentimental. No photos or nothing. But through a combination of some old shoeboxes of stuff in my nan's house and some newspapers and books at the library in the city where I've spent the last couple of days, FYI, I can tell you all the following. My mother is only one of five female FTSE 100 chief executives. She did this, I imagine, by donning shoulder pads and body checking any man who got in her way. Her mother, my nan, was a teacher. Which doesn't tell me much about history, but when she was my age in the 60s, she marched with other women to make abortion legal. And she wore her hair in braids sometimes. And she had lots of sex and no one judged her for it. Except maybe her mother, where she alive. Because she, my great grandmother, died when British European Airways Flight 411 crashed on approach to Manchester from Amsterdam. Oh, this is ironic because from 1944 to 45, she flew as a pilot during the war, delivering planes that needed to be fixed. Which is like not an exciting job to have. She wasn't dropping bombs or anything, but it was a big deal because she was doing a man's job. And men were bastards and didn't like women like my great grandmother doing their jobs. And her mum, well, she was a long time ago, so I didn't find out much, but her name's mentioned in an article from the Daily Mail from 1928 because she went to a scandalous pool party. And I'm not sure why it was so scandalous, but the man who wrote it from the Daily Mail did not like that girls were drinking and dancing to Negro music and having fun in swimsuits. Which shows that some things don't change since the Daily Mail still does not like girls drinking and having fun, but it does like photos of girls in swimsuits. So I guess some things do change. I have basically learned in my family history that there were boys who made things shit for the girls in my family. But things have moved on for my generation. Because for me, it is not so much that the boys are assholes they are, but more that the girls have become the assholes the boys used to be. I used to ask myself every night, why? Why? What did I ever do to you? And I would imagine myself 25 years from now coming to a school reunion with my beautiful husband and my beautiful handbag and my beautiful children and when you all said Scarlet, Scarlet, I'd say I'm sorry. I don't recognise you. I don't recognise any of you. And then I'd leave. But as I sat on the pack train to the city, no one recognised me. No one pointed, no one whispered. And that's when I realised you are all nothing. There is a big bad world out there where St. Helens means nothing. There is a big bad world out there just ready to swallow you up. And when it swallows up you lot, it will vomit you back up because you are indigestible little girls. That's the kind of girls you are. You are food poisoning. And the world will know you girls are like that. And you will be all alone. Together but alone. Do you see? And I will forget you. I have already forgotten you because I am not a St. Helens girl. But you will not forget me. After all, you have my photo to remember me by.